Welcome back to Learn SKN and today we have an agricultural science video for you. This one we will be looking at the we're still looking at the anatomy and physiology of the plant, but today we're looking at the internal and external structure of the stem. So one of the previous videos we were looking at the root. So we're moving all the way up the plant now. So we started at the root and now we are going to be looking at the stem. So we're looking at the internal and external structures of the plant stem all right so we're going to look use a bunch of different resources including the textbook and also the an, an next slide i found slide pack i found and also some slides that i prepared myself all right so let's go the stem stems can be placed in one of two groups they can either be woody or hard or soft or herbaceous Examples of plants with woody stems include mango, breadfruit, orange, etc. Examples of plants with soft stems include tomato, thyme, corn, etc. So those stems that are soft and tend to be green and perform photosynthesis, they tend to be termed as herbaceous. Monocot stems are often so monocots normally have non-woody stems, they're normally herbaceous. So monocot stems are soft and non-woody, herbaceous and are often green and carry out photosynthesis. Dicot stems, on the other hand, are woody and are covered in a waterproof layer of bark. The stems of most plants grow upright, but some have underground stems called rhizomes. Cactus plants, cacti, have stems that are modified to store water. And so this diagram here is depicting the cross-section of the dicot stem, the cross-section of the dicot stem. But we're going to get more into that later on. Okay, so importance of the stem. Why is the stem important to the plant? To support the leaves so that they receive maximum amount of sunlight for making their food in a process called photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is the process by which green plants manufacture their food. Why else is it, is it important? Take water and other minerals from the root to other places of the plant, to other parts of the plant. So it takes the water, the stem takes the water, so the root absorbs the water as we learned last class. But where does it go? It goes up the stem, so the stem helps the water, it channels the water up to the rest part of the plant, the branches, the leaves, the fruit, the flowers, all those parts. Uh, the stem also supports and displays a flower so they can be pollinated. Of course, you need pollination happening in order for the plant to reproduce. And so the stem is ideal. That's what supports the flowers, the leaves, all those things. But in this case, the flowers. It would be very difficult for, you know, pollination to take place if the flower is just on the ground. You need a stem to display the flowers so that bees and birds and other insects and animals can get to see the flower for pollination you know pollination is key for reproduction in plants it supports the fruit supports and displays the fruits so it supports and displays the fruit so you may wonder why do you want the plant want to display its fruit of course in order for the plant to you know be able to survive the species to survive the fruit has to be eaten and then the seeds spread wherever so of course the fruit need to be displayed so that birds can grab the fruits monkeys whatever animals can grab the fruits and then eat the fruits and pass out the seeds elsewhere so that the plant can survive, can be spread around the area. And then they say, in some cases, the stem can be used as food storage organs, such as in sugarcane. Some stems are important in the reproduction of certain plants. So some plants, you need what you call stem cuttings so that you can reproduce that plant because, you know, some plants don't have a viable seed that can be planted either in a greenhouse or in in, in the field just like that some plants it's best to use the stem stem cuttings for reproduction and of course stems provide new tissues for the plant we're gonna, we're gonna look at that later on also so those are some of the importance of the stem now let's dig deeper into those parts so again functions movement of, of materials water and minerals from the root to the leaves the manufactured food also very important the manufactured food has to come from the the, the leaf and it has to reach the root. So how does it do, how does it do that? The stem would facilitate all of that. So the stem allows the water to be channeled, the sorry, the food to be channeled from the leaf, from photosynthesis, and comes down to the rest part of the plant. And of course, we said it support the leaves and reproductive structure. That's the fruit and the flower. And of course, can be used as food storage. Now the external structure of the cell. So you have the lenticels or the breathing pores. 
The bud sca scale scars show where the terminal buds have been located. The leaf scars show where the leaves were attached. And you have the key what these key ones, the terminal bud and the auxiliary bud. Now the terminal bud on the end of the stem and the auxiliary bud on the side of the stem, as you can see here. So the auxiliary bud allows the plant to you know grow upwards. And of course, sorry, the terminal bud allows the plants to go upwards. And of course, the auxiliary bud shoots off to the side to get branches and stuff like that. So those are the external structures of the stem. Of course, there's a pith here in the middle, but that's an internal structure. So you see the lenticels here. The bud was previously here. The leaf sky, the bud sky. The auxiliary bud here to shoot off for the branches. And you have the terminal bud that helps the plant to grow up. Now the internal structure of the plant. So remember we looked at the importance of the plant just now, the stem just now. And we said that for one, it allows water to move from the root up to the rest parts of the plant. And it allows the food to move from the leaves to the root and the lower parts of the plant. But how does this, and we also said that it allows for new tissues to be, to be made. But how does this happen? Now the stem would have internal tissues. And some of the key internal tissues would be the xylem and the phloem. Together, they make up what you call a vascular bundle. So you have the xylem, the vascular bundle here, and it's the xylem and the phloem and the cambium. So you see the cambium around here, this ring here is the cambium. But the key ones here are the xylem, the green part here, and the phloem. Now what is the job of the xylem and the phloem? Together they're called a vascular bundle. What is the job of these, these tissues? So the xylem, the tissue that transport water and nutrients up from the roots to the stem and the leaves. So that's the main job of the xylem. And let me tell you, the xylem and the phloem are, are, are located all over the plant. Roots has them, stem, the leaf has them. And so the job of the xylem, when you hear xylem, you think water. So the xylem takes the water that the roots would have absorbed via the root ears into the plant. And so the xylem runs through the air and right up the stem, as you can see. The xylem is located here, and this is a cross section of the stem. So the xylem runs right up the stem. So again, the xylem tissue is responsible for carrying water and nutrients from the root to the leaves. It is located near the center of the stem. And we can see it here on this diagram that depicts the cross section again from the next angle. You have the xylem tissues right here, right? You have the xylem tissues, and they are taking the water absorbed by the plant up through the stem. So the xylem again is located near the center of the stem. And you can see it here in this diagram right here. This diagram is showing the xylem and it's located near the center of the stem, the xylem tissue. And the xylem takes water from the roots or I should say transport water all around the plant. That's the xylem's job, to transport water. Then we have the phloem, right? You have the phloem. Now, what is the phloem? Now the phloem tissue is responsible for carrying food produced in the leaf to the rest of the plant. The phloem is usually located near the outside of the stem. So the phloem now is responsible for the food transportation around the plant. So the plant makes its food in the leaves and then the phloem tissue takes that food from the leaves and distributes it all around the plant, down the stem to the root. So the phloem deals with the food distribution in the plant. And as you can see here, the phloem is located on more on the outside of the stem. So that's the phloem right here. So you have the xylem, phloem, xylem water, phloem food. These are food for transportation around the plant. So those are the two, some of the two key ones in the stem. Then you have the cambium, a thin green actively growing tissue located between the back and the wood the bark and wood and produces all new stem cells. So that's the job of the cambium, produce all new stem cells. So the cambium helps produce the annual rings, help to improve the growth of the plant, help to make the plant grow. So it in, in terms of circumference, so it produces all new stem. That's the cambium right there, right? So the cambium tissue is responsible for production of new xylem and phloem tissues. It is formed between the xylem and the phloem. And so that's the main job of the cambium. So you can see the cambium producing new tissues, new tissues annually. So that's what we call the annual rings. So the growth annual rings. So the xylem, the, sorry, the cambium helps produce those annual rings. And so you can see the internal structure again. The back, which is the back of the tree, is normally all 
inactive phloem, the heart root of the tree is normally all inactive xylem and the sapwood, the new active xylem. And you would have seen this depicted in this diagram. We have the heart wood right here. And so you can see that the job of the cambium is to produce new tissues, new xylem and phloem tissues. So it replenishes the vascular bundle. That's the main job of the, the cambium. All right. Now, you have to be able to distinguish between the cross section of the monocot stem and the dicot stem. Remember, we said in the monocot stem, it's normally herbaceous, the dicot normally woody. Now, the, mono, the monocots, look at these vascular tissues in the monocots. They are basically scattered. They don't really have any set pattern per se. So the vascular bundles contain both xylem and phloem. Example, grass corn, that's a monocot. And you can see how they are, they are arranged in the stem, basically all around. As opposed to the die cut here, that you can see some sort of structure in the pattern of the vascular bundles. They are basically in a ring. You can see them right here in a ring. Whereas the monocot is just all over the place. So that's one key distinction between the monocot stem and the die cut stem. And under a microscope, you can see the different vascular bundles. You can see the xylem tissues here, the ear space the phloem tissue, etc. You can see them under a microscope. Now, the in, again, I just showed you the, the monocot. Now, this is the dicot, as I showed you before, and it is more structured as a stem. And you can see it here, different parts, the sapwood, the heartwood, and of course, the back and everything like that. So the heartwood, the back, and those are all normally, the back is normally inactive phloem. So those are some of the key internal structures in the stem. Some of the key internal structures in the stem. You have the epidermis, of course, and the outskirts of the stem. And the epidermis' main job is for protection of the inner parts of the plant. You have the cortex right here. This is the dicot. And then you have the vascular bundle, which comprises of the xylem, phloem, and the cambium. So those are some of the key, the key tissues in the plant. And so you can see the main function of these ones are key. The xylem, phloem, so the xylem is water, phloem is responsible for food transportation, the xylem water transportation, and the cambium is responsible for making new tissues. And of course, the very center of the stem is called the pith. So the pith is the very center of the stem, as you would have seen in this diagram right here in the center, you have what you call the pith. So those are the major, main, internal and external structures on the stem. But the stem doesn't end there because they are what you call special or uh, modified stems. So we have special or uh, modified stems, some call them underground stems. And we have quite a few. Normally stems are found above ground. However, some stems go below the ground. These stems are usually for food storage organs. Examples, you have the rhizome and you have ginger. You have the calm, dashing, you have the sucker, you have banana plantain, you have the bulb, onion, garlic. Then you have the stem tuber, such as Irish potato and yam. Those are stem tubers. And so all these are examples of modified or uh, underground stems. And you have some example here of the calm. You have some stem tuber in the Irish potato or the white potato. You have the ginger rhizome. You also have the bulb, the onion bulb, ginger rhizome again. Uh, turmeric. Turmeric is a rhizome also. And then you have some calm here and you have some tubers here. So those are what you call modified or uh, underground stems. You modified or your underground stems. Those are specialized stems. So you can see a depiction of some of the underground stems such as the bulb, the rhizome and the calm. So all those are examples of specialized or uh, modified stems. But we have some examples of some of the crops that are used some of the stem crops and yeah of course you have your asparagus and what they are used for you have you know your trunk the back will be used for lumber your bamboo can be used for a variety of things and of course you have your irish potato used for a number of cooking items you know fry, um, your french fries you can boil them mash them whatever you want to do all right so those are some of the specialized stems that you have out there again you have your calm you calm like you're dashing your tanya, those things. You have your bulb, your onion, your tulips, your lilies. 
you have your tubers, you know, white potato, Irish potato, and also your food storage organs. Then you have the crown, a next type of specialized stem. Then you have the spurs, short stems found on woody limbs adapted for increased food production, like apple and pears. And then you rhizome, as I said before, and you have the stolons, such as strawberries, they are the long, slinky kind of stems that grow horizontally above the soil surface. All right, so that's it for the stem of the stem, the, the internal and the external structure, and the external structure of the plant stem. Next time, we'll be looking at another part of the plant, more or less the, the leaves. So we're working our way up this up the plant, so the root, the stem. Next time, we're going to look at the leaves and then the bones of the flowers and maybe fruits. And then that would complete 1.2 from anatomy and physiology in section B, right? Crop production. All right, so thanks for watching. You know what to do now. Like the video, subscribe if you're not, hit the bell to know when I drop another video. And as, as I said, you know, one of my previous videos, 2021 exams are coming. So use Learn SKN to your full advantage so you can get ready for your exams. All right, so make Learn SKN one of your bookmarks. All right, good. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.